welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the SU 122A. It's the tier 5 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Pilsen under the command of Bartholomew Rexodus, 44 by 2 of TLG clan. Now he's opted for the 152 millimeter howitzer. I can tell that because he's got a muzzle brake at the end of the gun. If he didn't have that, if he had the 122, it would just be a straight barrel at the end because they didn't have the muzzle brake. Anyway, it's actually basically like the SU-76 in that it's basically an engine up front with the driver and the crew at the back in the carriage. But this is an RT that never existed, actually, because although it was on blueprints, they never had went ahead and built it. They did build an SU-122, but it was a tank destroyer, rather it looks like a tank destroyer. It was actually used as an indirect fire support um, uh, self-propelled gun. And uh, so yes, it did exist, but that gun is not in the game, and it should be, and it could be as a, as a premium. But of course, Wargaming don't like putting premium RT into the game because that upsets the other players. Okay, he fires a bit snap on that FU-100, but his first shot gets 136 hit points. Now, this was the first arty that I marked when I uh, got into the game. Yep, unbelievable as it might seem, I actually had to like this arty, and it took me a while to get used to it. But I can tell you that I had some really interesting games. One where a Cromwell B decided to circle me and shoot at me and take away my hit points bit by bit and of course you don't get many hit points in one of these but i showed him what the 152 millimeter howitzer could do at close range because i fired once and literally obliterated him uh yes at close range this 152 is capable of a lot of damage as you can see here it's capable of 550 alpha 38 millimeters of pin and 6.7 meters on the damage radius and it does a stun duration of between six and a half and 11 seconds. Back then, uh, I think the figures were slightly different, but it certainly one-shotted the Cromwell B completely out of the game. I think he was a bit surprised to say that a little arty like me could actually get that much damage. But I can tell you, I've actually uh, posted videos of me playing this arty where I've actually won the game for my team. And the last tank I seem to remember I was up against was either a T-34-100. And I hid and waited for him to come near and ambushed him and wiped him out. That AT-8 is in a very poor position, but he's just been tracked. He needs to get back out of there, otherwise that Viz-44-1 is going to have him. You can see the enemy RT is taking bits off him every now and then. Well, Polymeus Rexus has done fairly well already to get as many hit points as he has. Lining up another shot, this time on the Viz 44-1. Rounds out, looks good. Direct here, good shot. 321 off that one. Now, with an open top at the back, this RT is vulnerable to RT fire, but it's also very poor for the crew because, of course, they will be open to the elements. And although the Soviets did put a cloth over the top of the open-top vehicles to protect the crew, in Soviet winter, that could be absolutely, uh, well, virtually nothing. It wouldn't protect them at all. It'd be very, very difficult for the crew to operate under uh, the freezing conditions. Of course, uh, Russia can get rather cold. I've been there three times to Russia as well as uh, twice to Ukraine uh, and Crimea, actually. I uh, went to Kiev on one occasion, then I went to um, Sevastopol. So I know what Russia's like, but on the occasions I've been to Russia, the lowest temperature I've ever reached was minus 25 degrees centigrade. And that's quite cold. <laughs> in fact, it's very, very cold indeed. So I wouldn't want to be in an open vehicle like this out there because it would be very difficult. He's styling in, rounds out. Just missed him, but got 191 from Splash. Or was that somebody else shooting him? Well, we've also just located where one of the enemy RT is, because they're at the back of the map. Now, this RT does have a very narrow arc. Only 7.5 degrees either side of the centerline. 
So that's 15 degrees in total. But the good thing is that it does dial in much quicker than other RTs. So even though you've got a long aim time, it actually does tend to dial in fairly quick. So I know that sounds a bit of a contradiction, doesn't it? It's got a long aim time, but it dials in quick. Hmm. Actually, no, it is fairly good. Most people don't play the SU-122A, which means that this RT is one of the lesser played ones. And uh, if you want to get the SU-8, well, some people can free XP their way through, or alternatively, they get uh, uh, enough, um, uh, well, they get enough points to actually uh, earn the uh, the next vehicle up the line, the SU-8, which of course is a very fun RT indeed. I actually went the whole way and made my way until I eventually got the third mark on this RT. It is actually possible, yes, to play and get a third mark on this vehicle. It just takes a lot of practice. Okay, we've got a CDT just around the corner there. CDT, that's not an RT or a, a tank that I know much about, actually. No shot on the Bursa. We're three down on the enemy at the moment, so this is not going well. We seem to be focusing around the center of the map near the factory. You can see the enemy RT is definitely trying to get at our guys. The good news is we do have protection in the form of T-67. The bad news is somebody just entered the cap, which advertised that they are on their way over here because they came straight out of the cap again. So they're not interested in capping. They're more interested in killing. I suspect it might be the Skoda, but since they've got so many tanks available, it could be somebody else. It's tier 7 game with tier 5 tanks in it. The enemy team's also got a Fifi. Rounds out. Oh, good hit. 281. Quite a big hit. The guy's been slowed down. And that's a wheeled vehicle. The fact that he's been hit as badly as he has means he probably took a hit to the wheels and to the engine simultaneously. Now, something else you might notice, actually. Barfogmeus Rooksters is using the extra HE at the moment. The non-stun variety. Standard reload on this RT is 30.30 seconds. He's got it down to 24.82. Rounds out. Good hit on the rear. 274. That's a big hit. It's not the rear, actually. I thought it was the rear. He was backing off. He actually hit the front plate. And because he was uh, tracked, we got the track damage. He's gone down. We're now one up on the enemy, so it's turned all the way around. Still five enemy out there, though. And they've got about the same number of hit points as we've got. They've got two RT. We've only got the one. Skoda just sitting around the corner. We haven't got enough splash radius to get something on him here. And so we're relying on our teammates to uh, look around the corner. There's the round out. No, no damage. But the Thunderbolt does get the kill. So the scores are now even. They've got one more RT than we have. But their lineup includes the Jagdpanzer Fear and an E25. The Jagdpanzer Fierce tier 6, E25 tier 7, the Cockroach. We also have a Jagdpanzer Fear, but we've got a T67. And, of course, we've got the M2Y. Now, the M2Y happens to be our platoon mate in this game. As is the uh, Jagdpanzer Fear. T67's gone out to take the lead. He's looking. Oh, he's found the GW Panther. Okay, he's right over the other side of the map. And one of the good things about this RT is you can fire over the entire range of the map. 
just takes you a little while to dial in. Okay, let's hope that that GW stays where he is just for the moment, because rounds out. He fired when he wasn't fully dialed in, but he gets the kill anyway. And that's his... Was that that's his first kill of the game? I had to check for a second, but yep, it is his first kill. It also doesn't show on the stats because it was a blind kill. Target wasn't moving towards the end, which might mean that that guy was a bit of an inexperienced arty player. But the other guy in the Fifi is not inexperienced. Although he doesn't have any kill, we have seen some pretty good shots from that guy. Jagdpanzer fear over this side. No. We did lose our T67. That's the unfortunate thing. And here comes the E25, the cockroach. We're not loaded yet. Our Jagdpanzer's going to have to try and help us. We won't be able to get a shot at close range either. We need to get closer to him if we're going to get around into him. So whilst the Jagdpanzer fear distracts him, we're going in for the shotgun. Go for the ramp. Okay, didn't get the um, as much shotgun as we would like. And now we're taking damage. Jagdpanzer fear comes in. We lose. And we're out the game. But the Jagdpanzer fear can kill him now with one shot. Oh, he didn't. Oh, no. And we're going to get hit by Artie. And yes. So now it's down to the M2Y. Unfortunately, the E25 managed to escape that shot from the Jagdpanzer fear. Which meant, of course, that uh, in the end, we were not able to uh, kill him off. He was only on a few hit points. We couldn't do it. So now we're following the Jagdpanzer fear, who's up the other end of the map. So we'll move over there because, of course, we haven't switched over yet. So we'll get closer. Of course, the E25 is going to fly over here as much as quickly as he can. He's going up that slope at the moment. And in fact, he's gone into the cap area to force the cap. Well, M2Y got one hit. You're going to have to go over the edge. No, you can't sit around and wait. You've got to move now. Ram him if necessary. Oh, he rammed the stanchion. That Jagdpanzer seemed to hop. But he's gone down. But I don't think we're going to make it back to our cap in time. And that's it. They've capped out. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first ace tanker for Bartholomew. It's Exodus 44 by 2 of TLG in the SU-122A. You can tell it's the first ace tanker because he got the scrolls underneath. Even though it was a defeat, he still got an ace. He also got a, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get eight. And he also got a confederate flag for, or confederate medal, for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. As well as a win eight of 4,922, which is super unicum standard. In fact, he did hit a lot of the enemy. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in the game actually belonged to Bartholomew's Rex. There's 2,007 hit points of damage, but he didn't get 20%, so he didn't get the high caliber. Second highest damage was the E25, who got 1,974, and of course got a Piscucci's medal. Third highest damage turned out to be this tank, uh, I think, which is the CDT, 
1761. When it came to kills, the CDT managed to get five, three kills, uh, four kills went to the M2Y, I should say, and three kills went to the E25. You can see that uh, Bartholomew's Rexus 2007, we did mention that, he got one kill in that game. And when it came to base XP, it was the CDT again, 1034. E25 got 939. And in third place, it was the Jagdpanzer Sophia with 635. And you can see that uh, Bartholomew's Rexus only got 478 out of that one. 14 shots fired, seven direct hits, and no penetrations at all, 12 splash. 2,007 hit points of damage, of which 1,497 were at more than 300 meters. You get 18 rounds of ammunition in this, so he actually still had four rounds spare at the end of the game, but that shotgun didn't pen. Two hits received, both penetrations, I'm afraid, out of the game to the E25. Nine enemy vehicles damage, one kill, 286 hit points of damage assistance, and four stuns caused, but no stun assist. On a premium count, made a profit of 19,164 credits and 2,268 experience points out of that one as well. So it was a very good round in the SU-122 in terms of damage. You don't often see an SU-122 driver getting that much, unless, of course, they do have a lot of experience. I must admit, I personally have actually done as much, if not more, and got ace tankers in my SU-122A. And the more that you play like this, the more likely you're going to get ace tankers, even if you don't get as much stun assist as you'd like. Hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.